the secret behind how SpaceX Starlink's DTC service works. So how exactly do you get a signal from this phone to 350 kilometers in space? It's a good question. I'm glad you asked. Let's get into it. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. Today we have a little bit of misty morning and focus combination. The Dark Moon Teas, so good, so good. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking space, talking SpaceX, talking tech, all of that and more. I'm glad you're here. So today we're gonna to be talking about DTC. I get this question all the time in live stream on the JC Live show that I do on Friday nights. If you're not here, why not? Come and visit me, <laughs> 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Fridays. So I was reading an article about DTC and it gave the basic understanding of what's going on, but I wanna dig in a little bit deeper and give you even more information. Hopefully, so when I get this question, once again, every live stream, I could just say, look at this video, all right? You'll know exactly how this thing works. So that's what we're gonna to do today. If you enjoy this content, please throw it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. If you're not, if you are, I appreciate that. Click the notification button here, then click all. So when I go live, like the JC Live Show tomorrow, you'll be notified of it immediately, according to what YouTube says. Doesn't always happen, but let's just hope. Once again, click all. Also, if you just wanna say thank you for all of my hard work, there's a little thank you button down there. You can give a dollar or two if you like. If not, it's perfectly fine. Consider becoming a member of the channel. That would be even better. And if you want more SpaceX Starlink specific content, I have over 450 videos I've put together just for you in the last 45 months or so. So check those out. I'll put a link here. Don't click on it yet. Go back and click this link when you're done watching this video. So let's jump into this article and then I wanna hear from you down below in the commentary. I'll give you my commentary, of course, after and I'll give you a lot more information when we're done with this article. So hang tight, all right, hang tight. On Wednesday night, March 12, 2025, at 10.35 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, SpaceX launched 21 Starlink satellites from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida. That's right up the road from me, about three hours or so. The Falcon 9 rocket soared into the night sky and eight and a half minutes later, its first stage landed flawlessly on the drone ship, a short fall of Gravitas its 22nd trip. That's a lot of reusability there, right? 22 times. The upper stage then deployed all 21 satellites into low Earth orbit, adding to SpaceX's tally of nearly 8,100 Starlink satellites launched with over 7,000 still operational. This batch included 13 satellites with direct to cell or DTC capabilities designed to connect directly to standard mobile phones and tackle dead zones worldwide. These DTC satellites differ significantly from the standard Starlink version 2 mini satellites, though both belong to SpaceX's second generation or Gen 2 constellation. The version 2 minis are broadband workhorses built to deliver high-speed internet to user terminals on home boats, RVs, we should add planes to that list. The DTC variants, however, prioritize basic cellular service, texting, calls, and light browsing straight to LTE phones, no dish required. Both satellite types share a common lineage, starting with the same base platform before being tailored for their roles. The version 2 Mini measures roughly 6.1 meters by 2.7 meters when folded, with solar arrays spanning about 30 meters once deployed. 30 meters, like almost 90 feet. That's a massive solar array. It weighs around 800 kilograms or 1,760 pounds packed with power for broadband throughput. The DTC version keeps a similar footprint. It measures around 6 meters by 2.7 meters, but adds a 2.7 meter by 2.3 meter phased array antenna for phone connectivity. Very, very important point there. This bumps its weight to approximately 850 kilograms or 1,870 pounds, a modest increase driven by the extra hardware. The solar array remains comparable, though DTC satellites lean on custom silicon to optimize power for their unique mission. 
The real distinction lies in their tech. Version 2 Minis use advanced lasers interlinking the wide bandwidth system to shuttle massive data loads, peaking at speeds over 100 megabits per second for DISH users. I see about 200 to 300 megabits at this point, which is even faster, about two times faster. DTC satellites equipped with eNode B modems, I've talked about these in the past, the same 4G LTE tech as ground towers use. The real distinction lies in their tech. Version 2 minis use advanced laser interlinks and wide bandwidth systems to shuttle massive data loads, peaking at just over 100 megabits per second for DISH users. I've seen 200 to 300 megabits with my DISH. It's getting faster. DTC satellites equipped with eNode B modems, I've talked about these modems in the past, very important. The same 4G LTE tech as ground towers trade that bandwidth for direct phone capability. Their antennas beam focus signal to Earth, achieving about 17 megabits per second in tests, significant for basic communication. This shift makes DTC satellites less about raw internet speed and more about universal reach. Design-wise, they are not entirely separate beasts. SpaceX modifies the version 2 Mini chassis, swapping out some broadband components for DTC gear like the eNode B and larger antennas. This hybrid approach keeps production efficient while splitting their purpose. Version 2 Minis as internet hubs, DTCs as orbital cell towers. The DTCs brighter shine five times that of a version 2 mini comes from those reflective antennas, a quirk SpaceX is addressing with astronomers. This launch, SpaceX's 28th Falcon 9 mission as of 2025 and 20th SpaceX Starlink flight almost shared a stage with the Crew-10 mission to the International Space Station or the ISS. That flight, set for four astronauts from three countries, was delayed from Kennedy Space Center due to ground equipment issues. I think it was a hydraulic problem. Now targeting March 14th. That's tomorrow. I might go live for that. Hang in there for that. We'll let you know. Once again, subscribe and then click notifications. Then you'll know. <laughs> Whether it's broadband at home or phone signal in the wilderness, SpaceX basically has you covered here. So this is good information, but I want to dig in a little bit deeper. Once again, you guys asked me, how does this work? How do we pick up a phone and talk or right now just text with a satellite that's sitting at 350 kilometers in space in comparison to a tower that's sometimes only 10 kilometers away or 15 kilometers. How is that even possible, right? And this is a really good question. And hopefully I will answer this for you. So let's start out number one. Number one, the actual surface area of the DTC satellite is about 5% greater. And the reason being is that 2.7 by 2.3 meter massive phase array antenna. Now that is what adds the phone capability along with the eNode Bs. We'll get into that in just a second. So this massive antenna, all right, once again, 2.7 meters by 2.3 meters. Let's call it like what? Nine feet by, let's make it eight feet. So a little bit oblong, but nine feet. It is a big antenna and it's highly focused. Once again, it's a phased array antenna very highly focused. Also, the version two minis weigh in at about 800 kilograms, whereas the DTC versions of that are about 850 kilograms. You can see the weight difference, 1,760 to 1,860 pounds, somewhere around there, about 100 pounds greater. Once again, that takes into consideration the eNode B, which is the modem, as well as that massive antenna. Once again, nine feet by, let's call it eight feet, somewhere or thereabouts. Also, like they say, they get this shine. And the reason being is that antenna, that massive antenna, which is not on the other satellites, shines. And even though they put in dielectric um, coatings, those matte finishes and all the rest of this stuff, they still shine brighter. So it's about five times brighter without the coating. With the coating, it's still about two and a half times brighter. 
it's brighter. And there's not much that they can do about it as of right now. But that is just one of the, let's say, downsides of them. Now, the other reason why they're brighter is because they're sitting at 350 kilometers in space instead of 550. They are 200 kilometers closer to Earth. That's another reason why you can use them to be able to, right now, text, eventually talk, and then finally use it for video and whatnot, surfing the web. So it's closer, 200 kilometers closer. Now, another fun fact is that these phones are able to get about 17 megabits down. 17 megabits, that is from a satellite, once again, at 350 kilometers. In comparison to SpaceX Starlink with their own phase array antenna on your roof, you're getting about 100, 200, I'm seeing sometimes 300 megabits down. Is this ever going to be able to get to that speed? The answer to that is most likely no. I would say 80%, no. But that's not what it's for, right? It's for basic connectivity, like they said, texting, talking, and eventually lightweight video. Maybe GPS, locational stuff, mapping, that type of stuff. You should be able to do that on your phone with no cell signal. That's the key here. No cell signal is required. You're connecting directly from your unmodified phone, LTE or 4G phone, to a satellite. Turning this phone into a sat phone from years ago that used to cost thousands of dollars. Now your phone can do it. Now, the big question that I always get is how is that small antenna in your phone going to be able to communicate? We understand that, yes, they could communicate down to us without a problem because they have this big antenna. Well, that big antenna is the secret. Even though these phones are putting out like 0 0.1, 0 0.2, maybe one watt of transmission power, small amount. SpaceX Starlink's DTC is not. It's putting out 10 watts or more. It's a lot, but it's highly focused. Think of it this way. Those satellites overhead are focusing on a very small area of the planet as they're coming over, okay? So instead of being like omnidirectional antenna like you see on the towers next to you, I shouldn't say omni, some of them are omnidirectional. Some of them are about 120 to 180 degrees. Those antennas only see a certain portion, and that is it. Whereas these antennas on those DTC satellites are very, very tightly focused. They do what is called beam forming, all right? They can actually focus that beam using that phased array antenna, focus that beam into these narrow, narrow, tightly narrow, hundreds of narrow beams onto the ground. So it is once again, highly focused. Also, the ears are very sensitive, okay? It can hear that one watt from your phone. Now, to attest to that, I used this during a real case scenario when the hurricanes came through. And I was able to text my wife next to me using SpaceX Starlink DTC service inside of this studio through eight and a half inch poured concrete walls and a roof. So it works, it can hear this tiny, less than half a watt, sometimes one watt maximum phone. It can hear it, all right? Once again, it has massive ears <laughs> and it has a lot of power. And of course, it's doing that beam forming. Now, the side to that is not only is it closer, but it's the E-node Bs that are very highly specific. An E-node B is the exact same thing that you'd see in a cell tower, but it's on orbit, it's in space. All right, and those are the modems that are doing all that translation of the data that's coming from your phone and coming down back to your phone. That is the secret sauce. So to sum up, we have the E-node Bs, which are modems, the same type of modem that we have in a cell tower near you, but they're sitting on a satellite at 350 kilometers in space. Those E-node Bs are doing all that translation. They are taking that small, tiny signal and amplifying it, the faint signal, once again from your phone, amplifying it using that uplink and then translating it and sending the data back and forth. The E-node Bs are responsible for that. But the antennas, the phased array antennas really get the job done. The reason being is they're sending down signal, let's say instead of like a floodlight, they are sending the signal down in a laser beam, hundreds of these little laser beams. 
Once again, not a floodlight like we see on a cell tower. That phased array antenna is the magic sauce. Without that, none of this would work. And of course, you pair that with the E node B to do that amplification and the translation. Now, also, we see that they are 200 kilometers closer. That helps a lot too. Every little bit closer makes the signal stronger, so to speak, all right? Or let's say the amplification needed to translate that data is less. And as you have to insert less amplification, you end up inserting less noise. Less gain, less noise. More gain, for the most part, you get more noise and it's hard to understand the signal at that point. So once again, closer just simply makes sense. So 17 megabits today, but tomorrow they're saying about 20 to 30 megabits is not going to be an issue. So as time goes on and we see more and more of these DTC satellites on orbit, everything is going to get better. It's going to get faster, lower latency. It's just simply going to work. And like I said, if I'm able to use it now in its beta phase inside of this building, you can go outside and use it all day long because I was getting two bars from space more bars than I was getting from an AT&T tower up the road from me, where I always get one bar. I was getting better signal inside from, once again, 350 kilometers. Absolutely crazy. So anyways, guys, I hope this helps you understand how these little phones and their little faint signal with their 0.1 watt to one watt can actually still work. The secret sauce is in the satellite, not in the phone. I hope that helps. Anyways, if you found this interesting, please throw the video a thumbs up. That's very helpful. And share the video and the channel with your friends, family, colleagues, Reddit, Facebook, wherever you frequent. I would really appreciate that. And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all of my merch and my tees and my shirts and my books and everything else. Go check it out. Go to jchristina.com. If there's something there that you like, pick it up. Help support me and my family. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay connected, maybe through DTC. And we'll see you in the next one. Love you all. Bye.